If you're building an automation in Zapier and it's triggering with an action inside of Airtable, then you don't want to miss this video. I'm going to be going into detail about the three different triggers that are currently available with Zapier that trigger from an action inside of Airtable. So if that's of interest, stick around and let's get into it. Hey, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Gareth Pronovost and I am the owner at Gap Consulting, a company that helps you to organize and automate your business and life with no code tools. If that's of interest and you want to learn more about that, check all the links below. Now, before we jump into it, I do want to invite you to join me for my upcoming live training. Once a week, I hold a live webinar where I go through the steps to build a second brain for your business that can run using automation to do a lot of those mundane admin repetitive tasks that you wind up spending so much time on. So if you're looking to save up to 20 hours per week using automation, reclaim that time and put it to more productive use, please check out the link below or visit me at garethpronovost.com slash webinar dash registration and sign up for that next training. Even if you can't join us live, you can always grab the replay after the fact. All right, but without further ado, let's get into the heart of this. We're talking about the three main triggers that Zapier makes available for Airtable. So jumping right into my screen, I'm setting up a trigger inside of Zapier. And of course, I've chosen the Airtable software, meaning that something has to happen in Airtable that will awaken this automation to do something. We don't know what that something is, and that's quite frankly irrelevant. What we do care about is how do we get the automation to turn on or wake up and initiate. So we look and click on trigger event and we see that we get three main options before us. Number one is new record. Number two is new record in a view. And number three is a new or updated record. So let's talk about the differences of these different triggers and why we would choose one over the other. So first and foremost, we have a new record. This means that as soon as a new record is detected in your Airtable base, Zapier will initiate this automation. That'll wake it up and it'll go forward. Now, sometimes this might seem like a really great choice when it actually isn't. So let's imagine a scenario. Let's suppose that you have a project and when a certain uh, new project is added to your database, that then triggers your automation you might initially think that using new record would be the right way to go here. Because as soon as that new record is created, that would then initiate your automation. However, oftentimes you don't have as much information as you need in the record at the time of creation. So let's look at an example inside of Airtable. If I'm just building a database from scratch, I can add a base, start from scratch. And you see, we start off with Table one, again, in our example, let's name this project so that it kind of mirrors what we were looking at or what we were talking about before. I'll get rid of these extra fields and let's say we need some data in order for a project to kick off. The project has to have a name, so I'll give this project one. The project has to be assigned to somebody, like who's the client that we're representing. So we probably would have a client field here. Generally speaking, this will be in another table. So maybe we create a new table and we call it clients. And over here we can have just like the name of our different clients and maybe their email addresses as well. So I'll go ahead and, and just imagine this here. And so I am now a client in my database and we have our projects and I can connect a client here. And then maybe also we are looking at a kickoff date for this. Great. So we now have all of the pieces of information that we need in order for this project to go into whatever we need it to do. So again, let's go back now to our Zapier automation and think about how new record would work. You saw that it took me a little bit of time to fill out the information for that project. I had to put a name for the project in. I had to pick a kickoff date for the project and I had to make sure that it linked properly to a client that I had to put into another table. Now that takes some time and sometimes this automation, if you use new record as the trigger, this automation would happen before you have all the relevant information inside of your record, which then causes you to potentially have a broken automation on the back end, which means this automation can trigger prematurely. As soon as a record is created, 
like this, it doesn't have all of the relevant information. And so if that were to trigger an automation, if that automation, for example, needed to be sent to the email of the client, well, can we figure that out? Sure, we can look up that information using a lookup field like this. But if we didn't get a chance to add a new client to our new project, then we don't know what email address to send this to. So it's really important that you're thoughtful about what the automation needs to do in terms of the action steps. So again, going back to this example, if we wanted to send an email as our second or third action, then of course, we don't want to trigger this automation as soon as the record is created, unless we can ensure that there will be an email address as soon as it's created. Again, we can't control exactly when Zapier picks up that there's a new record in our Airtable database. Since we can't control that, it's possible that it fires prematurely. So there are two instances where I like to use new record as a trigger. Instance number one is if I have a form that people are filling out before they create a record. So for example, I might have a form and I might make all of these fields required. There must be a project name, there must be a client, and there must be a kickoff date for the project in this example. Now what I can do is go back into my projects table and say that I want to edit the table permissions. If I come down here, I can say that no one can create records except I can allow records to be created through forms and or automations. So this then allows me to lock it down so that I never have to worry about a record being created without the information that the automation requires. The only way that a record can now be created here is if somebody actually goes to this form that I just created and as part of this process creates a thing, new project, Maybe they bring in a new client. Of course, in this case, I only have one client. And then I add a new date and submit. That is the only way that information is going to be entered in here and a new record will be created. And now I can use the new record created in Zapier because I can ensure that I have all the information I need in order to perform the additional steps of the automation. Now, the other occasion that I like to use the new record is if I need to automatically link some records together. So let's suppose instead of projects and clients, I also create a table called summary. And summary might be this other uh, you know, record just on the back end, and I want to connect everything to summary. So I'll just have a summary record here. I'll delete my other records, and I'll be sure to grab my record ID, and I'll just put in this quick record ID formula. Now, if I want to allow projects to always link to summary, I can do so as follows. I build a link to the summary table. And if I want every new project to automatically link to summary, well, I can certainly build an automation that connects it right away. So in this case, I can use the new record trigger to properly link. Because in this example, I don't require there to be a lot of information inside of my projects table before I connect it to my summary, right? And since I don't need there to be that additional information, there's no problem for me to use the ability to link up as soon as the record is created. Because I don't require to know an email address or a kickoff date or who the client is or what the name of the project is. Since I don't require any of that information, it's easy for me to then trigger the automation as soon as a new project is added. So that is the first of the trigger types in Zapier. Now the second and third are a little bit more similar. The second is a new record in a view. And so with a new record in a view, we can build a view that has specific settings. As soon as a new record appears in that view, that will initiate the trigger. So this automation trigger is really helpful. Going back into Airtable, if I create a new view here, and I can just call this automation trigger, I can apply all kinds of different filters here. For example, maybe I want to trigger an automation as soon as today is the kickoff date of a project. Well, I add a filter that says the kickoff date is today. Now, of course, we don't have any projects that meet that condition. And so you see all the projects have been filtered out. 
But if I go back and I change the kickoff day to match the date of recording here, then that record comes into my automation trigger view. That would then initiate the automation. So this is a great way for you to apply filters and trigger automations on specific dates or only when they meet specific conditions that you set forth. So build your view with the intent and as a quick pro tip, be sure to lock that view down after the fact. So click on the people icon here, lock the view down. This will ensure that no one else on your team comes behind you and accidentally changes the filters that you've set forth. You can apply any number of filters here, but again, lock it down to make sure that nobody changes those because if they do, your automation is going to fire prematurely. Now that is very different from the third and final trigger, new or updated record. So this will trigger when a record is created or updated. Let's go and dive a little bit more deeply on this particular trigger. We choose an Airtable account and once we've connected properly, then we of course have to choose our table. In this case, it's our projects table. Uh, and then we need to actually have a last modified date time stamp. Now we can build this inside of our database using the last modified time. Now this particular field is going to look at specific fields or all editable fields inside of our database in this particular table. So we can tell it to watch the name, the client, the kickoff date, and or the summary. Or if we want, we can watch all of those things. So let's suppose we wanted this automation to trigger every time a change was made to the client. So we can say, watch specific fields. I only wanna watch the client field here and we'll go ahead and create this last mod field type. Now you see that it automatically gets date and time stamped with the date and time that we made the last change to the client. So if I were to test this out, let's say I had a different client in here named David. If I wanted to make a change here and bring Gareth out as the client and instead include David, you see as soon as I do that, my last mod time has changed to the current moment. And so this is a great way to re-trigger automations. And here's the key difference because when we build an automation using a new record in a view, that record only triggers the automation one time. Even if the record leaves the view and then comes back, the record only initiates the automation the first time. However, with last modified time, every time the last modified time changes, the record reinitiates that automation. So this is a great way for you to repeat an automation multiple times every time a record performs the same condition that you want it to. And we can get even more granular. You'll see here that I will be able to link up to that last modified time field that I just built. After refreshing my page, all I need to do is come in and sync up with that last modified time field. And then I get the additional granularity of limiting to a view. Now this is an important one. Let's go back to our example really quickly. When any change is made to the client, that will change the last modified time. So that means if I remove this client, last modified time is updated. And then if I add a new client, last modified time is updated yet again. What if I don't want the automation to re-trigger when I remove the client, but only when I've added a new client? In that case, I better set up some rules that keep that from happening. I can do that using another view. So I can create a clients only view and I can apply a filter here that says that the client must not be blank. So it's not empty. Now going back into Zapier, I can add that view to my trigger. So this is basically saying when the last modified time field is updated and I simultaneously have a client. This way I don't have to worry about the automation triggering if I've removed a client only when I add a new client to that piece. This will save me a lot of headache and prevent my automation again from firing prematurely. So which of these is your favorite trigger to use inside of Zapier when initiating automation from Airtable? Leave a note below and let me know your answer to that. 
Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. As always, I hope you found that to be extremely helpful. If you did and you'd like to learn more, swing by our website and see how we can help. We offer a free Airtable crash course that will help you level up in Airtable quickly, and we also have some paid services, including hourly consultations with our experts, we have some online courses and a group coaching program, and for advanced needs, we can build a bespoke solution for you from scratch. So swing on by, and I look forward to connecting with you soon.